Surprise, motherfucker. What the f bro? Paper That's cap! Totally cap! That means lie! No! It's definitely true. <laughs> Took you long enough. <laughs> All right, like that's possible. All right, fine. Niggas is just gonna be niggas. I've seen enough. We now return you to our regularly scheduled program. Hey guys, how you doing? It's your boy Dragon, and before I begin, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas slash a Happy New Year, because 2023 was quite the eventful year for all of us, but we all managed to survive it and come out on top. So here's to another fruitful year of crappy disappointments from Hollywood, and to the hope that there will be more great films like Godzilla Minus One, the Mario Bros. movies, John Wick 4, and Oppenheimer available to us in order to offset the inevitable loss of our neurons from the incoming movie and TV show calamities. I'll drink to that. Mm. As for what we're going to cover today, well, y'all are in for a treat tonight because we're going to be talking about a movie that I personally think can stand on the same echelon of top tier Christmas action movies like the first Die Hard movie, and it is probably the most wholesome, violent, and gory non horror Christmas movie I have ever seen in my life up to date. Dude, that's awesome! Now, I just need to ask you guys for a small favor, so come close, Falsaken. If you end up enjoying this video while attaining the spiritual state of Christmas Nirvana, do me a solid by doing what you're seeing on screen right now, and you'll get eight years of Christmas and New Year's luck with your in-laws, all right? It's fun and good for your health. Without further ado, let's watch Santa whack some fools. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle, jingle bell, So we begin in the most unexpected yet most familiar place to start a Christmas story ever, a London bar, where a depressed Santa Claus played by David Harbour is just drinking his troubles away like a disgruntled Amazon delivery driver because he's getting really tired of the fact that human beings, particularly the children, have become a bunch of ungrateful greedy bastards and let's just say that he is at his breaking point. They're just like little junkies. God damn. <laughs> They're little sh they just demand, they don't believe, they just want, crave, consume. This motherfucker don't miss. That motherfucker don't miss, man. He's good. The man gets so depressed that he's already considering resigning from the job of Santa, even though I don't know how you can do that, in his position anyway, and as he's leaving, he decides to just whip out the present like a FedEx delivery driver for the bar lady's other grandson, which confuses her quite a bit since she's never told this man her grandson's name, but she can't think about that now because this man went drunkenly up to the roof to god knows where, and when she sees him flying around on his reindeer in amazement, Santa decides to thank her for her service in the most appropriate appropriate way possible by leaving her a little present. Oh my god. It's <sighs> now comes the part where we throw our heads back and laugh. Ready? Ready! <laughs> Now that the film made it clear what Santa's current emotional status, we can start the story in earnest where I'm gonna save you at least 16 minutes in side slash evil character introductions by just doing a quick roll call because let's be honest, we're all here for the Santa carnage. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle, jingle bell, <laughs> I'm President Rathcock, and I approve this message. All right, now that I saved time trying to figure out who's who, we can finally get to the good stuff, but let me break it down real quick. Jason and his family are invited by his mother Gertrude to a Christmas family gathering because she's going to be announcing who the next head of the family company is going to be. Now, the movie makes it very clear that Jason's family is very rich and that his mother's obsessive control over his life inside and outside of work is what caused his marriage with Linda to end badly. In short, she is a controlling bitch. <laughs> You don't say. Huh? Everybody calls me Trudy now. Trudy. Well, that makes her sound like a whore. Okay. Oh, she doesn't even know the meaning of the word. God damn. No! Don't sh** in my mouth and tell me it's chocolate cake. Wait, wait, what? Big sack of shit. Ooh. No wonder your husband left you. But I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Merry Christmas to you too, Senator. 
Emotional damage! Yeah, so the family gathering goes as well as you can expect, considering everyone's trying to backstab each other like the British royal family, and after some dinner, Trudy is put to bed by her parents, where we find out through her talking out of a walkie-talkie that her only Christmas wish is for her divorced parents to get back together, which is very sweet and all, but, um... Like that's ever gonna happen. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Why not, you stupid bastard? Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Moving on ahead, we find out that the head of security and half of the service employees in the house are secretly mercenary hitmen in disguise from Home Alone 3 working for their leader Scrooge or Jimmy Martinez for those of you cops who are still looking for a missing cartel Sicario, and after conducting a brutal house purge, they end up capturing and holding the entire family hostage. Now, their plan is to essentially steal, and I swear I'm not making this up, $300 million of stolen, dirty US government money that Gertrude put in her private house vault instead of using it to illegally fund more wars in the Middle East so the US could have an excuse for stealing their oil. But if that's not insane enough, Scrooge also knows that she has a private security team called the Kill Squad that will come rescue her anytime now and kill anyone that dares hold her hostage. <laughs> you serious? What you one crazy ass? So what does Santa Claus have to do with any of this? Well, let's just say that our sugar-filled drunken bearer of gifts has to do a delivery on Gertrude's house, but as he's eating and drinking away an old bottle of 1938 brandy worth thousands of dollars while enjoying the massage chair, he gets caught in the crossfire of the mercenaries' house raid, his reindeer interns run away without him after hearing the gunshots, and then he ends up getting attacked by the Asian henchman who would end up regretting waking up the jolly Christmas giant. Move. He gonna kill you. But wait, there's more. Jesus Christ, how are you even alive? Did he just... Oh, that poor bastard. <laughs> Realizing he just brutally killed someone, the drunken Jolly Giants is about to dip this entire messed up situation until he sees a distressed Trudy, which gives him the courage slash excuse in all honesty to finally kick the slaughter into high gear because from the look on his face, Santa Claus's vendetta is coming to town. Blood for the blood god! What's going on in there? Sanity is for the weak, imperial fool! That light! Smiles upon us. As for the unlucky mercenaries, they finally find out what happened to their Asian operative, and a few minutes later we see Santa trying to call 911, but not before his attempt fails and he gets into another fight with another of the mercenary goons that still hasn't figured out that you don't f with Santa. <laughs> Holy let's see, that was awesome. My nigga. <laughs> He's gonna destroy him. Guaranteed to leave a mental scar. Once his foe was fried extra crispy, Santa gets a surprise call from Trudy from the dead man's walkie-talkie, where she tells him the whole situation as to why the mercenaries are at the house, and after he realizes that he cannot leave an innocent child to this danger, he decides to make his presence known to the fools who dare challenge him, and let's just say Scrooge's anti-Christmas death threats made Santa even more determined to punish this naughty bunch. 
But maybe you and I should discuss that in person. Santa Claus is coming to town. <sighs> That's called foreshadowing. No sh after getting the fear of Father Christmas in him, Scrooge intimidates Gertrude and her family, thinking they may have info on this killer Santa, but after he notices no one is giving away any info, he decides the best way to get someone to talk is to have his psycho henchman pull down Jason's pants and use the nutcracker to, well, uh, crack his nuts! Excuse me, why? Seeing her dad in danger, Trudy tells them all to not hurt him because if they do, Santa's coming for their asses, but this somehow angers Jason so much that he just tells her that Santa isn't real, he's not coming to save them, that all the presents Santa left her all those years prior were him and her mom who bought them ahead of time, and that Christmas sucks balls. Jesus Christ! Really? Yes, you're probably right, Brian. Such scum. After Trudy runs away in tears, she talks to a wounded Santa some more to ask him if he's actually real, and of course he does tell her that he is absolutely real, but he also says to her that he is not the Santa everybody thinks about. No shit. You see, Santa Claus 1000 years ago used to be a freaking greedy, violent Viking raider who pillaged, plundered, and killed whatever he pleased with his warhammer named Skull Crusher, yet somehow this dude got the eternal job position from God to become the bearer of gifts, I guess. And no, don't ask me how that happened because the movie never explains it. But what I do know is that Trudy gives him such a good Tony Robbins motivational speech that he can now give himself the excuse to let loose on his viking rage for the sake of protecting her and her family. In other words, DESTROY FOR THE SAKE OF DESTRUCTION! OF COURSE! What a twist. Scrupulous, but effective. Now after Santa fails to choke a mother of a Christmas ornaments, he ends up getting captured by Jimmy Scrooge who somehow gets pissed off so much at Saint Nick being himself that he decides to throw the supernatural bag of gifts into the fire to make Santa mad, and then he just decides to tell us his backstory, which is basically that he was born into a poor family that went into hard times once his dad lost his job, yet the reason he became such a bad person is because he tried to sneak inside an old man's house during Christmas Eve to steal a present, but the old man had to take a piss and they spooked each other so much that the old man tripped down the stairs and died, which got him arrested for trespassing, and somehow Juvie got him to start his villain arc as this anti-Christmas psychopath arch nemesis of Santa Claus. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. While Santa is being forced to listen to Scrooge's sob story, Trudy manages to trick him and the other two stooges into thinking the styrofoam she's blowing down the air ducts is snow, which gives our boy the chance to be able to escape through a chimney with his Christmas magic, and that's when the chase gets good, but before we get to it, I do need to deviate just a little bit because I found this bit of the movie funny. So you guys remember that Morgan Steele douchebag who thinks he's better version of 90s Steven Seagal? Yeah, I remember. Well, this idiot thought it would not only be awesome to gift his mother-in-law a literal sales pitch binder in order to convince her to fund his upcoming dog movie while they're still being held hostage, but on top of that, he jumped out of the house window in order to escape and abandon his entire family, which makes this moment taste as good as fine wine. Bunch of ex-military guys, but I gotta warn you, they know you're coming. I think they're ready for you. Oh. Yep, shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Regretted it immediately. They better be. We're on a tight schedule. Shit. Dumbass. Going back to the main plot, obviously Gertrude's kill squad ends up betraying her to help Scrooge steal the money, and once they find out Santa is hiding away in the tool shed, the kill squad thinks they'll be able to easily eliminate this man without realizing that they've just now become his prey once he found that construction hammer laying around unused of its true potential. Like, I'm sorry, but Santa is gonna give them all a silent night-night with the way he's holding that damn thing. Santa's gonna eat through these guys. I got a plate full of cookies. Run! Run! We're all gonna die together out here. <laughs> <laughs> Delivering ass whooping. That sounds about right. 
After getting frustrated that he couldn't get his hands on the money, Scrooge finds out from Gertrude that Jason, through a secret Christmas card she read earlier on in the movie, told her that he actually stole her money and was about to dip his mom's place after the Christmas party to start a new life with Trudy and Linda. But does anyone even care about this part of the plot anymore, honestly? Are you serious right now? How about no? Okay, well, Santa continues his rampage against the Kill Squad, and look guys, I'm gonna ask my editor Boxman to show you guys some heavily censored film footage and screenshot segments as I describe the following slaughter because their original versions are too gory for YouTube, and I'd rather play it safe so I can show you guys some gratuitous Father Christmas violence. That's fair. Now, I kid you not, this bearded cultist of corn starts the slaughter by stabbing a bunch of men to death with a literal sharpened candy cane knife like he's John Wick all of a sudden, dual wields two ice skate shoes like they're viking battle axes and kills people like he's an industrial ham slicer, ties two goons to a rope attached to a wood chipper that turns them both into ground meat, makes Thor proud by smashing some more enemies in with his trusty war hammer, but then to finish it off, he stuffs a live grenade inside the bulletproof vest of the last goon, only to turn around in satisfaction as he watches the poor bastard get blown away to smithereens. <laughs> what? What the f I have several questions. Don't ask. <laughs> Now, to kick this into high gear, Santa ends up going to rescue Trudy because two of Scrooge's goons figured out her location, and before I show you this, I need to ask you this question. Have any of you ever wondered just how much physical damage could be caused by a Kevin McAllister trap from the Home Alone movies, or if they could potentially cause death? Well, this movie answers that burning question while moving the plot along with this obvious easter egg. <laughs> You what? Dad! Come on now, dog. A few moments later. Oh, that looks painful. That's all you got? Gotcha, bitch! Naughty. Naughty! Wow. No comment. But it's definitely true. After saving Trudy, Santa goes into the living room where he finds the dead body of another of Scrooge's psychopath goons who was whacked and stabbed to death by iron rods by Linda's party, but he finds out from them that Scrooge took Gertrude and Jason as hostages to get the money, yet they're able to save them just in time thanks to Santa's still lingering bloodlust. <laughs> Seriously. We get it, man. Moving on, Linda and Jason make up with their relationship issues, I guess, and they commemorate this happy occasion by brutally stabbing a goon in the neck with an icicle. Meanwhile, Santa chases down Scrooge and the Kill Squad leader Snowmobiles by using Baby Jesus' manger as a sled, somehow manages to kill a goon with it while stealing their snowmobile in the process, Gertrude shakes off the Kill Squad leader to where he hits a tree log in the struggle, Scrooge manages to dismount Santa by tricking him into running straight into a tree stump, which sends him flying and finally, Santa has his showdown with this Christmas demon. Oh boy. Copy it. So you have chosen death. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Come on, man. 
As you notice, Santa got capped hard gang style by the leader of the kill squad, but unfortunately he would come to regret that he ignored this geriatric scion of Bernie Madoff greed, and let's just say that she takes the Tony Soprano and House of Cards lifestyle philosophy very seriously. I have no idea what the f*** is going on here. Oh, he's dead. Damn right it does. Good riddance to bad rubbish. As for what happens in the last couple of minutes, Santa almost dies but is saved by Jason warming him up by throwing money into a pit of fire which somehow resurrects him, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer returns with the sleigh and a replacement magic bag for Santa, and everyone lives happily ever traumatized for life! That's it? That's it. That's it. Alright guys, so after telling you all about this great movie, I'm gonna give it a personal 8 out of 10 rating and the dragon seal of approval at the same time. It is a unique Christmas action film that is fun for every single one of the adults in your family to watch, whether sober or drunk, that I've not seen being done often, and the casting of David Harbour as Santa Claus was the correct call as he brings that grim comedic take from his Stranger Things days. Now, while the parts with Santa were plentiful and extremely fun to watch, especially his interactions with John Leguizamo's character, character Scrooge, I almost pegged down my personal rating to a 7 out of 10 because of the unnecessary plot focus that was prioritized on the family in question at many moments in the film over Santa. It seemed to me as almost like the filmmakers had realized at the last minute that they needed to give the family members something to do in order to be considered worthwhile contributions to the film, and you see this especially near the end of the movie. Even so, I highly recommend you watch this movie whether in or out of the Christmas season, as I can assure you that you will end up enjoying and having as much fun watching it as I did. Now, please understand that due to Universal's copyright, I was forced to pick and choose very limited moments of extremely fun action set pieces from the movie, so what I've shown you in this video is but a piece of that really awesome movie. No way! Yes way! With that friends, I wish you all a wonderful year, Namarie, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and check out my link tree link in the video description or on the about section of the channel if you want to subscribe for a notification mail list so you're aware of when I post anything new on my socials. But with that, please accept this parting gift from me if you're still hungry for more videos, since my collection is, as I will always say, ever growing. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. And a happy new year. And now for something completely different. What are stories but mystery boxes? There's a... What a load of sh**. You want to play a game? Okay. I'll play with you. Say hello to my little friend! Damn! Damn! Oh, no, I ain't messing with you. Oh, no. Until next time, I'm a British person. Good night. What? You want more? It's okay. We know. <laughs>